here's my really nice AC machine that I have for welding and uh, it's very good it's adjustable from very low current on up to 295 on the high range but it doesn't have DC and so what I want to do is add that I'd like to have connectors on the front panel for it so I've got a plan in mind I'd like to keep the machine looking and working like it does right now without big changes these older pin type connectors though they're very good aren't made anymore uh, as far as I can find anyhow uh, not not like this so that's going to be part of the project to go ahead and set up the connectors so that it's unobtrusive and it looks just like it used to to look uh, only now it would have AC uh, and DC I decided to go ahead and make my own connectors here and I'm just demoing this because it's one way to go I know most of you don't have a lathe and you wouldn't really want to bother with this per se and uh, I understand that in that case I do recommend you get connectors on your your machine which probably is an old machine you're retrofitting and you can go to the twist lock type connectors quite easily um, if that didn't work out inline type connectors would uh, I didn't really fully explore that but anyway I'm showing you this because I decided I wanted to keep the machine looking pretty much like it does today. This is Delrin bar. And uh, so when these are cut off, they'll be held in place using a snap ring at the rear here. Here are some of the plastic cuttings I've got. This shroud goes on the back side of the insulator and uh, fully protects it. The wire is connected using these copper ferrules, which you can buy. I'm only going to use size 4 welding wire inside of the cabinet. These connectors are going to be installed through the face of the cabinet by punching uh, using a, an actual metal punch to get a 1 inch hole to set the connectors in there and their insulators. After they're in, this shroud goes on the back side of the insulator. One of the leads on the welding machine had a bad looking pin plug, so I went ahead and made one since they're not available for sale anywhere. It has a slight taper to it, making it compatible with any of the sockets I've made. You don't want the bare terminals of the rectifier on the front of your machine. Uh, I don't want bare terminals sticking out of the front of anything or the back of anything. Another factor involved here is the fact that the rectifier gets hot it can only take so much, about 150 degrees, and then probably it would fail. So it really deserves to be mounted on a heat sink that's correct. This particular one works uh, per se, but it needs to have the holes drilled that match up to it. And then you have to find a place inside your cabinet to mount it. My cabinet has a lot of space and it's got a very powerful fan. Before drilling or working the heat sink in any particular way, it's probably a good idea to give it a nice iodine coat that will prevent corrosion. Doesn't take very long either. Then measure and center punch the holes that will be needed to mount the rectifier. In this case, the rectifier is larger than the holes that were supplied with the heat sink. Be sure to use some thermal heat compound on this. I don't feel like experimenting with whether it transfers heat very well or not. Just a thin coat. It won't need much. Just ensure that a large surface is transmitting heat. a little thin here. That should do it. 
and then just pop your rectifier on just tighten the nuts underneath and that should do it I'm gonna see if I can use these heavy terminals to connect things with in the cabinet if there's space I may have to go to something else though we'll just see but I think the heavier the better before we go too much farther I need to get in the disclaimer here Remember, there's a lot of power in something like this and a lot of danger, too. Uh, you're watching an experiment. This is not an approved type of uh, change or conversion that some company has developed. You're watching an individual's work, and as such, uh, there is danger, and you can get very, very badly hurt. So I'm going to suggest that if you don't know what you're doing with this, please don't do it. After reviewing the amount of space on the top side of the cabinet, I decided to locate the power sockets for DC much lower down above that 295 where it's very easy to get at that area and install the required wiring. Here's the first hole. Got it punched out of there. One more to go. For my machine, I thought it was best to mark negative and positive by the time I get through. And uh, I made one of these little rings to go on there uh, to indicate positive. And you can see by the time I'm through, this will go on the exterior of the case. It's easy to make. You can mark your case any way you want. You start off with one of these. And then you take your punch and run it as you would normally, going through the, the metal. Uh, I didn't remove the sticker part of it. I didn't stick this to the metal and then try to punch it. So just a little something extra so uh, that it just looks a little bit nicer and a little bit more professional. Now all the parts are installed. We're just about ready to test this thing. So I'm going to start off with a simple continuity check. I've got a sensitive vohm set to a 1 ohm scale, and I'm going to check positive to positive, negative to negative this first time around, see what we get. And we don't get anything. Now we're going to switch it around positive to negative, negative to positive. We should get an indication. And this meter says about 15 ohms. That's pretty good. With the equipment plugged in and set to voltage, DC volts, let's turn on the machine. Hopefully everything's okay. And then we're gonna to have to test positive to positive this time, and negative to negative. And it's set to a 60 volt scale. It's a little bit too much voltage for it, so I kick it up to 300 volts, no harm done. And then we should get a reading. And on this scale, we're getting about 75 volts DC. Well, I've got the new tip on there. Looks pretty good. So let's plug in and let's get ready to test this thing. Let's just try a 7014 rod just to see what happens. The rod is not warmed up or anything. Just a straight old rod. See what kind of weld we got here. Well, it looks pretty good. I didn't really, uh, really try. I'm just using a piece of scrap. I didn't uh, really weld exactly. But it's acceptable. Let's try it again.
that time I moved it faster, like really trying to weld it. Well, I'm happy with it.